the D&H Canal, the Gravity Railroad, and the mining industry is woven deeply into every city and town in northeastern Pennsylvania. It is a common history we all share. To help tell this story, the Delaware and Hudson Transportation and Heritage Council has put together a series of documentaries exploring the industries that built our history. What follows is a short sample from part two of an ongoing series titled The Delaware and Hudson Canal Company, Its History and Legacy. Coal. You could use it for heating, cooking, or running a steam engine. And there was plenty of coal, tons and tons of what they called the rocks that burn. But it was in Carbondale and around the city that would be called Scranton. But how do you get it to New York City? And how do you make money doing it? Some rich American investors held a meeting in New York City's Wall Street at a place called the Tontine Tavern and Coffee House. They set up a grate, burned coal on it, and made coffee one morning. Then they took out their pencils and sold stock in a canal company that would bring coal to New York City. The new Delaware and Hudson Company. We'll help the folks and we'll make a fortune with it, they thought. So they built the big ditch, as it was called, and some of the investors did make their fortunes. One of my favorite aspects of the canal is, are the locks because uh, you had to raise this boat up about 10 feet per lock in a controlled manner. There were no pumps, there were no uh, machines. The, it was just simply water flowing. So how did a lock work? If this was during the canal days, I would be underwater. My feet would be at the bottom of the canal and my head would be just about at the top of the water level. A loaded boat waiting to head to Kingston would be coming in this way, and this pocket door would have been flat. The boat would have been pulled all the way in to the other end where the doors would have been closed. At that point, this door would have been raised up, closing the water off. Four louvers in the bottom door would have been opened and slowly the boat would have been lowered down 10 feet. A lot of times, just before it's completely empty, maybe one or two feet of water left in it, they would open the doors up and that water rushing out would help push the boat out and on its way. Waiting at the other end of the lock would be a light boat, an empty boat, wanting to head back toward Honesdale. That boat would be pulled in, snubbed off with the snubbing post. Those doors would have been shut and there were four louvers in this now vertical door, which would have been opened, letting the water in. Gradually, the water level would have risen, and when it got to almost equilibrium, this door would have been flattened, and now that boat would be at this level and pulled on, and a boat would be waiting here, and this process would have gone on all day long, sunrise to sunset. All the locks in the Pennsylvania section were wood-lined. These iron bars that ran under the rocks would hold up these massive vertical wooden beams and then wooden horizontal planking would go on them. Very few locks have the original wood left, but there's some here at Lock 31. After 1850, in the peak years, there were as many as a thousand canal boats at any one time moving along the canal. So everyone talks about the canal carrying coal. That was in one direction. And of course, the boats coming back empty, brought supplies, well, for whatever was needed. As the canals got bigger, they wanted to do more things. They wanted to attract passengers. Uh, they wanted to carry freight. Uh, if you lived in Honesdale and you wanted to uh, buy a new, anything in the way of new furniture, and you had enough money, and you wanted to, uh, get the finest available in New York, how would you get it to Honesdale? You certainly couldn't put it in a, in a uh, uh, horse and carriage. Uh, it was carried on the canal. There was no railroad at that time. Those canal boats came back with all kinds of things that were needed and rapidly the whole area built up. To learn more about our area's rich industrial history, Contact the Delaware and Hudson Transportation and Heritage Council. Visit your local museum or take a trip to one of the numerous historical sites located all throughout the Lake Region. Mm -hmm.